In the past, archaeologists believed that once our ancestors, early members of the genus Homo, reached Europe about 1.4 million years ago, they were there to stay. Once hominins crossed the Mediterranean corridors, they established a permanent foothold, adapting to the relatively mild glacial cycles of the early Pleistocene. Sites found in places like Spain suggested that these early humans were tough enough to handle the changing weather and ice age cycles. Scientists called this the continuous occupation theory, the idea that humans were resilient enough to adapt to whatever the environment threw at them. New data has completely overturned that old idea. By looking at deep sea mud samples in ancient pollen, researchers discovered a massive cooling event about 1.1 million years ago, known as marine isotope stage 34. This wasn't just a cold winter, it was a climatic disaster so severe that it turned Europe into a frozen wasteland. Even the warmer areas like Spain became too harsh for humans to find food or stay warm. This event caused a great hiatus, a long period where Europe was completely empty of humans. The first Europeans didn't just move away, they likely died out entirely. The humans who live in Europe today, and those we find in the fossil record later on, aren't the descendants of that first group. The first wave arrived 1.4 million years ago, but went extinct during the Big Freeze. The humans we find in the fossil record later were not the descendants of the first group. Instead, they were a new wave of explorers. A totally different group of humans, like Homo antecessor, arrived about 900,000 years ago, once the Earth warmed up again. The evidence shows that the first wave of human settlers was extirpated or wiped out by the North Atlantic climate. This discovery changes how we look at human history. It tells us that our ancestors weren't invincible explorers who conquered every environment. Instead, their survival was often at the mercy of the Earth's climate. The story of Europe isn't one long, steady climb. It's a dramatic cycle of arrival, extinction and starting over from scratch. During the early Pleistocene, approximately 1.2 million years ago, the Earth's climate exhibited a predictable, gentle rhythm. Every 41,000 years, the Earth's tilt, called obliquity, would shift slightly, causing a mild cooling period followed by a warm one. Unlike the terrifying ice ages post 1.2 million years ago, which lasted 100,000 years and brought extreme cold, these earlier cycles were moderate. They were more like long, cool autumns rather than permanent frozen winters. Because the changes weren't too drastic, the environment stayed stable for a very long time. During these mild ice ages, Places like Spain and Italy stayed lush. Instead of turning into frozen tundras or deserts, these regions remained covered in open woodlands and evergreen forests. There was plenty of rain and enough food to go around. For early humans, this was an open door. It allowed them to wander from the Middle East into Southern Europe with ease. Crucially, because it stayed relatively warm, these early humans didn't need high-tech survival gear. They were able to thrive without knowing how to control fire or how to sew warm, tailored clothing. This stability gave our ancestors a false sense of security. They settled into Europe because the gentle climate made life easy and predictable. However, because they never had to develop complex tools or fire to survive the mild winters, they were completely unprepared for the merciless climate shift that was lurking just around the corner, the one that would eventually lead to their extinction. To understand who these first Europeans were, we have to look at the fingerprints they left behind in Spain. These fossils and tools tell a story of a group of pioneers who were successful for hundreds of thousands of years before they suddenly vanished. The most important clues come from a site in northern Spain called Atapuerca. Deep inside a cave called Cima del Elefante, scientists found a jawbone and a partial face, nicknamed Pink. This individual lived between 1.4 and 1.2 million years ago, making them one of the oldest Europeans ever found. When scientists analysed the face, they noticed something critical. This ancestor looked very primitive, resembling the older Homo erectus from Africa, more than the humans who lived in Europe later on. This morphological discontinuity suggests that these first settlers weren't the ancestors of later Europeans. Instead, they were a separate group that was eventually replaced. Further south, at sites like Barranca Leon, we find evidence of how these people lived day to day. About 1.4 million years ago, they lived along the shores of a massive salty lake. Archaeologists found Mode 1 stone tools here, simple sharp stone flakes used for butchering meat. By looking at the fossilised teeth of ancient voles, small rodents, found in the same soil, 
scientists can confirm exactly when these humans were there. They were clearly a population that knew how to survive in a landscape filled with giant animals. These early humans didn't live alone. They were part of a specific ecosystem called the Villafrankian Guild. It was a world of giants, including Homotherium, scimitar-toothed cats, and Pachikrakuta, giant hyenas. Humans likely survived here by finding a very specific niche, scavenging. After a giant cat killed a large animal and ate its fill, humans would use their stone tools to crack open the remaining bones to get to the calorie-rich marrow that other animals couldn't reach. However, this specialized lifestyle was a double-edged sword. These humans were heavily dependent on this specific group of animals and the stable, mild climate they lived in. When the climate shifted and the Villafrankian guild of animals collapsed, the humans who relied on them were left with no way to survive. The very system that allowed them to thrive in Europe ultimately led to their extinction. Around 1.1 million years ago, the golden age of mild European weather came to a violent end. Scientists have identified a specific moment in history, a mega freeze, that acted like a biological reset button for the entire continent. The evidence for this disaster comes from a famous underwater research site off the coast of Portugal. This location is like a time capsule. The mud on the ocean floor contains tiny fossils and ancient pollen that tell us exactly what was happening on land and in the sea at the same time. The data shows that roughly 1.154 million years ago, the ocean temperature suddenly plummeted. In areas that were usually warm and subtropical, the water temperature dropped below 7 degrees Celsius. This wasn't just a short cold snap. It was a brutal, sustained freeze that lasted for thousands of years, far exceeding any ice age these early humans had ever experienced. The reason this freeze was so deadly is that the Earth's natural heating system broke down. Usually, a massive ocean current called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation acts like a giant conveyor belt, carrying warm water from the tropics up to Europe. This is what keeps Europe much warmer than other places at the same latitude. During this event, melting ice sheets dumped a massive amount of fresh water into the North Atlantic. Because fresh water is lighter than salt water, it sat on the surface like a lid, stopping the conveyor belt from moving. This stalled the Earth's heat pump, cutting off up to 95% of the heat sent to Europe. Without that warmth, the Iberian Peninsula lost its protection and was hit by freezing air directly from the North Pole. Scientists used this climate data to simulate what life was like on the ground for the first Europeans. The results were grim. The amount of land where a human could actually survive dropped to almost zero. The biggest killer was likely the winter temperature. Because these early pioneers didn't have fire, warm clothing or insulated shelters, they had a hard limit on how much cold their bodies could take. The Great Hiatus pushed temperatures well below freezing, creating a wall of cold that these humans simply could not cross. They were trapped in a landscape that had become biologically uninhabitable, leading to their total extinction across the continent. When the Big Freeze hit 1.1 million years ago, it destroyed the one place early humans thought was safe, the Refugium of Spain. Normally, a refugium is a warm pocket where life can hide out during an ice age. But this event was so powerful it turned the lush Spanish peninsula into a barren, frozen desert. By looking at ancient pollen, scientists can see the exact moment the food supply vanished. Before the freeze, Spain was covered in oak trees, olive groves and nut-bearing plants, a buffet of high-energy food for early humans. But as the climate shifted, the forests literally died off. The pollen records show a violent change where trees disappeared and were replaced by artemisia, sagebrush and hardy weeds. This wasn't a rich grassland, it was a semi-desert steppe. For humans who relied on gathering nuts, fruits and tubers to survive, this was a caloric catastrophe. The grocery store of the ancient world had completely closed its doors. The most devastating part of this story is what these early humans didn't have, fire. While we often think of cavemen with torches, there is no evidence that these first Europeans knew how to build or use fire. In sites like Cima del Elefante, archaeologists have found zero ash, zero burnt bones, and no charcoal. Without fire, these people had no way to create their own heat. To keep their bodies warm in the sub-zero temperatures, they would have needed to eat 20% to 30% more calories just to keep their hearts beating. They were caught in a deadly trap. Their bodies needed more food than ever to fight the cold but the frozen landscape was providing less food than ever before. This burn more, eat less dynamic was a death sentence. 
the climate forced their metabolisms to work overtime, while simultaneously killing off the plants and animals they needed for fuel. Because they lacked the technology to sew warm clothes or build fires, they hit a biological wall. This energetic deficit is why researchers believe the first wave of Europeans didn't just move away. They suffered a total population collapse and went extinct. The hypothesis that early humans vanished from Europe during the Great Hiatus is based on a significant gap in the physical evidence, not just climate theories. After a period of successful expansion, around 1.2 million years ago, there is a 200,000 year stretch where no human tools or remains have been found. This archaeological silence suggests that the first attempt to settle Europe was a failed colonization, resulting in the total disappearance of the population from the continent. This gap is clearly visible in the geological layers of Europe's most important fossil sites. In the Sierra de Atapuerca, researchers found a sharp break between the older level, about 1.2 million years old, and the much younger level, less than 850,000 years ago. There are no intermediate layers showing human presence between these two points, indicating that the region was completely abandoned for several hundred thousand years. A similar pattern exists in the Orque region of southern Spain. After early occupation sites like Barranco Leon, there is a long interval where the sediment layers are completely empty of human activity. Stone tools and other signs of life only reappear much later in the Middle Pleistocene. Because this gap appears in multiple regions simultaneously, it suggests a widespread abandonment of the Iberian Peninsula, rather than just a small group moving to a different valley. While some sites were once thought to bridge this gap, modern dating techniques have proven otherwise. Most of these sites have been redated to either before or after this 200,000 year window. The lack of any verified settlements during the peak of the marine isotope stage 34 cooling event suggests that these early humans simply could not survive the era's extreme cold and environmental shifts. This evidence supports the idea that Europe was effectively depopulated until a new wave of humans arrived later. The 200,000 year gap in human history coincided with a massive reshuffling of Europe's animal life known as the Galerian turnover. During this time, the environment changed so drastically that the ecosystem early humans eventually returned to was fundamentally different from the one their ancestors had fled. The extreme cold and shifting climate around 1.1 million years ago wiped out many old world species. The giant hyena, which had previously dominated the scavenging niche, went extinct. Similarly, the southern mammoth, which was suited for warmer woodlands, was replaced by the steppe mammoth. This new mammoth had specialised teeth designed to grind the tough, abrasive grasses of the cold, open plains that now covered much of Europe. And by 900,000 years ago, a new group of animals known as the Galerian Guild took over. This included the arrival of the spotted hyena, which was smaller, more social, and more versatile than the giant hyenas of the past. At the same time, Primitive wild dogs were replaced by more modern wolf-like species. This created a much more competitive environment for any predators or scavengers living on the landscape. When the second wave of humans finally re-entered Europe, they were not walking back into familiar forests. They were entering a harsh, steppe-dominated world ruled by a new set of faster, smarter competitors and different types of prey. Survival in this new era required better tools and more complex social strategies than those used by the first pioneers. Around 900,000 years ago, the silence in Europe finally ended with the arrival of a new group of humans. This second wave was far more capable than the pioneers who came before them. They didn't just stay in the warm Mediterranean, they possessed the physical traits and survival skills needed to push deeper into the continent, even as the climate remained challenging. The most famous evidence of this comeback is found at Grandolina in Spain, specifically in a layer called TD6. These humans, named Homo antecessor, looked different from the earlier first wave inhabitants. They had facial features that were surprisingly similar to modern humans. In fact, advanced study of their tooth proteins has revealed that they are a sister group to the ancestors of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. This confirms that the people who recolonized Europe were a new branch of the human family tree, not just survivors of the old one. The most shocking proof of their resilience was discovered far to the north at Happisburg, England. Here, researchers found ancient footprints pressed into the mud of a river estuary. This site is located at a high latitude where winters would have been bitterly cold. Finding humans this far north during the early Pleistocene was a game-changer for archaeology. 
it showed that this new wave of people had developed the environmental plasticity, the ability to adapt, to survive boreal conditions that would have killed off earlier groups. Determining the exact age of the Happysburg site involves looking at the fossils of extinct animals found alongside the footprints, such as the steppe mammoth. While scientists debate the exact date, they agree it falls within the early Pleistocene. Whether they arrived 850,000 or 950,000 years ago, the message is the same. These humans were pioneers who could handle the cold, marking a permanent shift in how our ancestors lived in Europe. When we piece all this evidence together, a new story of human history emerges. Instead of one long, steady journey of humans living in Europe, the data points to two completely separate events. A failed invasion, followed by a successful conquest. The first wave acted like an invasive species moving into a new territory. They took advantage of an open door when the climate was warm and forests were lush. These early humans relied on the warmth of the Mediterranean and scavenged leftovers from giant hyenas and saber-toothed cats. However, when a massive collapse in ocean currents suddenly plunged Europe into a subpolar deep freeze, their world disappeared. Without the ability to make fire or handle the extreme cold, this first group of pioneers was wiped out. The second wave was a fresh start. This group, known as Homo antecessor, was better equipped for the challenge. Whether they had evolved better biology, like a faster metabolism to stay warm, or developed better habits like wearing skins or sleeping in groups, they succeeded where their predecessors failed. They didn't just survive in the sunny corners of Spain, they were tough enough to push all the way to the chilly forests of ancient Britain. The Great Hiatus was a 200,000 year silence that serves as a powerful reminder of how vulnerable early humans were to rapid climate change. The first Europeans, those who left behind the fossils in Cima del Elefante, likely met their end during a brutal frozen era. When humans finally returned to the continent, they weren't the descendants of the first group. They were a new lineage that would eventually lead to Neanderthals and eventually us.